Mars wouldn't welcome us with open arms. Warning, system offline. Pyro setting fire. I get down there and check it out. No, this is mine. We were ready to give everything to get there. Failure identified. Found it. Talk to me. It's a failure in Boss 415 48 aft starboard terminal. 415 copy that. All right. Rolling. Action. Among the things that really make us unique as human beings is our ability to imagine, to dream. And that's a cut. Thank you. To consider the possibility of living somewhere else, whether it's past those mountains in the distance, across that lake or that sea, or on another planet. Action. National Geographic had a very ambitious idea, which was to dramatize the quest to go to Mars in a really ambitious, cinematic way. And that's a cut. Thank you. Hold the crane, please. Hold so you will push yourself from there? And here, I guess that you would stop yourself, no? Yeah. Doing a project that explores Mars and doing it for National Geographic, a magazine that gave me so much in my youth. I think it was a wonderful opportunity to inspire exploration and give people some hope of dreaming. It's a message of let's imagine something together and break the mold and break the barriers and why not? Why couldn't we do that? What does National Geographic stand for? Science, exploration, education. <laughs> so for us, it is imperative that we get the science right. It's an extremely ambitious project. The thing about being a production designer is you've suddenly got to become an expert in the subject matter. So I've had to really look at what the reality of space travel is at the moment and think what it's going to be like in the future. The amount of research that has to happen to do a show like this is staggering. And it's easy to be seduced by the science. So part of the job is to remember that at the end of the day, it's a human story. I'll be hearing May too, obviously. It's about real people in a real environment that just happens to be uh, incredibly hazardous and, and terrifying if things go wrong. Action. Beginning reorientation maneuver. SRP in three, two, one. Because we wanted to anchor everything in authenticity. We've developed a genre-busting series that uses drama to suck us in to the content. And then there's this organic weave with documentary. The documentary storylines work in conjunction with the scripted narrative. So we're seeing the engineering that's taking place today for what's ultimately the Mars mission in the year 2032. OK, ready? At visor in. And I hope that it awakens a spirit of adventure in people so that they get behind this, because I think it would be pretty amazing if we could go to Mars. For thousands of years, our ancestors looked at the sky, saw that red dot, and wondered what's on it. And here, today, we have the capability of actually traveling there. We are so much better prepared today to send humans to Mars than we were to send men to the moon in 1961 this is a giant leap for mankind that needs to be done. Together, we could push out into the solar system. Not just to visit, but to stay. Just part of a re-energized space program that will send American astronauts to Mars. Two, one, and liftoff. This is a point in history that we don't come to often. We have alignment of so many organizations and opportunities and partners and changes happening that are all pushing in one direction, which is towards Mars. Mars has always been a part of the public consciousness. Going back to the point at which we began to realize during the scientific revolution that this was not just a point of light in the sky, but a world that potentially might have people on it or some sort of creatures, or that we might visit, it began to take on this new shape. In the late 19th century, Mars was the object of affection of Percival Lowell. He was wealthy enough to build his own observatory with some of the best viewing conditions of anybody in the world. And he's looking at Mars, and in his head, he sees canals and cities. 
and he was convinced that Mars had life. And he's worried that the Martian culture is going extinct because they're running out of water and they need these canals to channel water from the ice caps down to these cities. So a seed was planted in the hearts and minds of the public that maybe there is life on Mars. I am determined that the American space program will put its full intellectual power and technological prowess behind the search for further evidence of life on Mars. Main engine start, zero, and liftoff of the Atlas V with Curiosity. Breaking news this morning, the NASA Mars rover Curiosity touched down this morning right there on the red planet. Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. Spirit, Opportunity, Curiosity, all of these rovers have started to unveil and, and show us that there is water, uh, that the Martian soil has nutrients. On Mars, you have water, you've got carbon dioxide, you have nitrogen. You also have the primary elements needed for technology, aluminum, iron, titanium, sulfur, potassium, phosphorus. Mars is the closest planetary object that has all the conditions and resources needed to support life and therefore technological civilization. I do think we're at a turning point about Mars. We've sent orbiters, we've sent rovers, but I think now we're getting to the place where uh, we have the will, we have the interest, and we have the technology to send people to Mars. She's 14 stories based on those. She's your ship now. That is a cut, thank you. That's the one thing that I really was shocked by and learned first coming into this show, which is you always think that, yes, we're going to get to Mars, but you always think about it like for my grandsons or in a hundred years. And when you realize that we are going to probably do it in the next 10, 20 years, 30 years maximum, I think that that's an amazing opportunity for us.